Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's build covers a simple but very powerful endgame Void Hunter setup that is capable of covering all grounds of engagement and is great for those who just want a simple and reliable build. Condition of finality with Orpheus Rig is the combo that many people don't talk about within his high usage in endgame, but I can for sure tell you that using the two in hand makes endgame a cakewalk. Here's how to achieve it. To start, you're going to want to have Vanishing Step where dodging makes you invisible. Then you'll want Trapper's Ambush where activating Quickfall will allow you to turn yourself and allies invisible. As the build will be playable for both solo and team support, it makes sense to focus on the one area that Hunters specialise in. Invis has always been a powerful ability that Hunters abuse, but in our case, here, it's going to make getting up close and personal with Conditional Finality a lot more easier and safer. For fragments now, we have Echo Obscurity, where doing a finish on a target makes you invisible. Echo of Instability, where getting a grenade kill will grant a void weapon in volatile rounds. Echo of Sea Station, where completing the finisher will create a burst of void damage that makes other targets volatile. And Echo of Explosion, where void ability kills cause targets to explode. Generally, all the following fragments are going to be useful for you as it will cover multiple grounds of engagements. For up close, use an Echo of Obscurity and cessation will be leaving a lasting impact onto those who get caught within its effects. While for range, Echo of Instability and Explosion is going to be great for taking out targets at whatever range they are in. These all cover a key area most players will be playing in, and safety is being applied to make sure choices are always being applied and available when in dire straits. For the mods and stats, having a high discipline, intellect and strength stat will be the key for supporting the build as a whole. Intellect at tier 8 can stay roughly around there as we don't have any more mods or fragments available to speed up its process, unless you like the count power preservation mod. At this level we will be getting a 6 minute 3 second cooldown using Deadfall which is nice as this is fairly fast enough to make full use of Orpheus rigs once active. Discipline at tier 7 is also another good spot to aim for as with Front of Focus available, this will push it to tier 10 and a cooldown rate of 53 seconds under the use of Magnetic Grenades. As we are using Orpheus, you can use other grenades available thanks to Orpheus Exotic Effect of giving us a 10% ability energy back per enemy killed, but this is only useful when your super is active. Outside of that, we do have the Absolution mod which will be granting us a 5% ability energy back per orbs of power collected and then having the distribution mod will grant us a 3.5% ability energy each time we use our class ability near an enemy. Our strength stat is also going to be following the same route compared to our discipline stat at tier 7. At tier 7 and then applying front of Viger, this will push this stat all the way to tier 10 when active and will give us a 46 second cooldown for mini use. Mini will be used here and there and with absolution and distribution in hand, you won't generally need anything else to support it. Although, having the one to finish your mod is helpful for those emergency usage. In this section, we will be covering the armor charges and additional mods now. Charged up will provide us a plus one armor charge health. Then, having a void or harmonic cipher mod will allow us to create orbs of power while on the go. A times one void weapon surge mod for a constant 7% weapon damage buff will also help with taking down certain tough enemies much faster. The time dilation mod will extend the duration of all time based mods we have to around 15 seconds extra time, and the ammo finder mods for heavies are key for making our heavier choice more viable in the coming content such as reserves and scavenger mods. For weapons, we have the conditional finality exotic shotgun, a simple yet amazing exotic that is on the same level of high tier usefulness along with Wither Horde. A while back, the Ron Raid was available for all players to farm and get the following shotgun. And if you are one of the lucky ones to grab this, then congrats on unlocking one of the best all-rounder shotgun. Its usage in PvE allows players to not only shut down a number of champions without the need of mods to support them, but its fast reload speed allows players to repeat that action before the enemy even gets a chance to react. In PvP, the weapon is capable of stopping well on bubble users as long as you follow up with a melee, and this alone makes doing trials with the following a bit more riskier. For how simple this weapon is, it easily gets overlooked in most endgame content if you don't want to commit and get up close and personal to really fully bring out the weapon. In secondary, we have the Under Your Skin Void Bow with Dragonfly and Archer's Tempo. Out of all the Void Bows to own, this one is the best crafted version to own that doesn't require a damage perk to make it fully work. 
Dragonfly fits perfectly for my builds, as my use of tether is going to be making nabbing a wide number of multi kills a lot more commonplace and easier, while Archer's tempo will shorten the draw time for each precision shot made, which additionally makes follow up shots a lot easier in the long run while you keep your distance. Combining this with my shotgun allows me to cover all three ranges and react in the correct way if we engage a melee target. For those that don't have the Void Bow, Imperial Needle is sold by Zerp every now and then, while having a Void AR Scout is also a good alternative. So overall, the strength of the Void Hunter is unparalleled when compared to 90% of the builds in game, and this is with good reason. Strong survivability, ease of use, strong super and high viability makes Void Hunter builds in game a must have if you ever plan to do solo or team based endgame content. This is why using the Orpheus Rig and Conditional Finality combo will allow you to rule endgame with an iron fist. Now the strength of using Orpheus Rigs come from the super being selected which in our case will be Deadfall. Deadfall has a longer lasting debuff when active and also grants us a 10% ability energy back per enemy taken out. This also allows our super garner back by 50% super energy upon use and kills. So in the right environment where enemies are generally everywhere, a 50% super energy can easily turn to 100% over the given duration of the fight. However, adding in conditional finality to the mix makes garnering ability energy a lot more faster thanks to the debuff and damage it does. Conditional on its own is already powerful enough to solo legend tier mages and mini bosses without the need of damaging bonuses. Using this with Deadfall makes the setup highly silly in endgame, as it would take us about 4 rounds roughly to defeat a champion stunned or not. Although risky to use if they are ranged enemies within the Venicity, the following is still highly powerful with clearing enemies out within this AoE application. Lastly, it's also recommended to have the power preservation mod available just so you can produce more orbs for your allies and use the super over and over again. This one mod is going to allow you to get your super back fairly fast as long as your team also uses their super in quick time. As you see from my gameplay, I was playing with another person using Deadfall as well, and just us alone allowed us to chain our super one after another, and then allowed me to come in close and wreck everything within my path. As simple as it comes, the build is everything that an endgame player will want if you desire team support, great survivability, and just deleting the more powerful enemies rather quickly. If you have the following two exotics in your vault, why not take them out and give this build a try? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below but at the same time if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.